Hello, and welcome to my channel. Or back to my channel. Maybe. Hopefully. Hmm? Hmm? Let me know. Comment. Let me know. Are you coming back? Have you never seen this face before? I actually really hate intros, so let's just get into the case. On November 18th, 2006, 12 members of a skydiving club in Belgium flew over Flanders and they were going to take part in a group jump. Among the members of this club were two women named Els, Els Van Doren and Els Klotzmans. Now Els Klotzmans had been given the nickname Babs by Els Van Doren. So to keep things a little, um, less confusing, we're going to be referring to Klotmans as Babs. So along with Els and Babs, their diving instructor named Marcel Summers was going to be jumping with them as well as another team member. Now these four people were going to take part in what's called a skydiving quartet and that's where you link hands as you're jumping so you can make some sort of formation in the air before you deploy your parachute. So the four, they readied themselves to make the jump, and three of them, the other male club member, Els and Marcel, all jumped at the correct time. Now Babs, she was just like a half second off, so she had to wait a moment before she could jump. So she was not able to take part in the star formation they were trying to accomplish. You can still link hands with just three people. So that's what they did. And everything seemed to be going great. They linked hands, they let go at the right time, and Marcel and the other male diver, they deployed their parachutes. They were able to do that without any problems. But Els was not. So this incident was actually captured by the camera that was mounted on Els Van Doren's skydiving helmet. And you can see her in the video trying to deploy her first parachute, and it doesn't work. She's an experienced diver, she's remaining calm, so she goes to deploy her backup parachute, and it doesn't work. At this point, you can see the fear in her eyes. You can actually find this video online. I hate watching videos like this, I hate it. I've seen some awful videos on the internet that I never wanted to see. Um, if you wanna see it, look it up. I'm not linking it, you can, you can find that on your own. I'm not traumatizing anybody. <laughs> so if that's something you're into, you go for it. But just for you guys, I uh, watched this and absorbed this. And it's awful. It is the worst. I can't even imagine what that would be like to realize that you've jumped from a plane and both of your parachutes don't work. In the footage, you can see her tugging frantically at her straps just desperately to make them deploy and they just never deploy. She dropped from a height of over two miles, landing in a garden in Oak She was killed on impact. What the heck happened? It's actually pretty rare that your backup chute doesn't deploy. I know probably for people who are not familiar with skydiving, or it terrifies them. <laughs> I've never gone. I don't know much about it. But statistically, if you have a shoe and a backup shoe, you should be okay. One of them should work. In fact, I guess it's very unlikely for the first to not work. You rarely need to use your backup from what I have researched. So immediately, this is quite suspicious, especially Els is a very experienced skydiver. So things are just not adding up here. So if you hear all sorts of background noise, that's my cat. Or it's the trash being taken out in our apartment complex. The police investigate the crime scene and they look over Elle's body, they look over her equipment, and they see right away that her parachute cables, they were cut. So this was no freak accident. This was a deliberate attempt on her life, which unfortunately was successful, but why? The police begin their investigation by interviewing the members of the skydiving club, and they pretty quickly learned some very important information. Els Van Doren 
had lived a double life. During the week, the 37-year-old mother of two worked at the family jewelry store with her husband. Weekends, she spent at the skydiving club to do what she loved to do, skydiving, and to spend time with her lover, Marcel Summers. With this information, the police call in Elle's husband to interview because affairs tend to be pretty big motives, very common for murder. But he is eliminated pretty much right off the bat because when they drop the bomb on him that his wife has been having an affair with Marcel, he is visibly shaken. It was a complete shock. He had no idea. She was very successfully living a double life. She was able to keep her affair a secret. So he was shocked. So because he didn't know about it, the police felt that he didn't really have a reason to harm his wife. On his end, everything seemed perfectly normal and happy. So why would he have done it? That would be rough to find out not only have you lost your spouse, but to find out they've been cheating on you. That would be awful. It's You'd be so angry, but then you'd be grieving at the same time. And they have kids too, so it's just a lot. So the next person from the club they interviewed was Babs because she and Els were pretty close. They were both named Els. They both loved skydiving. They were both even school teachers. They had a ton in common. By all accounts, they got along great, and she seemed genuinely upset that this had happened to Els. The police, they're scratching their heads a little bit because it seems like no one really had any reason to harm this woman. So they decide to start making a timeline of events leading up to the incident. Since Marcel was her lover and they usually spent weekends together, the police asked him to come back in for another interview. And they're like, look, do you have any other information that might help us? It seems like they had eliminated Marcel as a suspect. I'm not sure why, because again, affairs, they're a very common motive. So I'm not clear on why they weren't suspicious of Marcel. Maybe they were, but from what I've researched, it doesn't seem like they stayed fixated on him very long. They ask him, is there anything else that might help our investigation? Did anything weird happen leading up to her death? Can you think of anything? And so this is when they discover that Els Van Doren is not the only Els that Marcel is having an affair with. He's also been involved with the other Els, Babs. He tells police that he would generally spend Friday nights with Babs and Saturday nights with Els. And he said that Els Van Doren was unaware of the relationship he had with Babs, but Babs knew about his relationship with Els. The week before the fatal jump, Babs, Els, and Marcel all spent the weekend at Marcel's place. Allegedly, when given the opportunity to pick between Babs and Els, Marcel picked Els to come <clears throat> to the bedroom with him, and he gave Babs a blanket to sleep on the couch in the living room. Marcel told the investigators that he had basically been trying to fizzle out the relationship with Babs. He expressed that he was truly in love with Els, and so he was trying to really have Babs back off. With this new information, the police ask Babs to come back for a second interview, and she immediately shoots to the top of the suspect list because just hours before she's supposed to come in for that interview, she actually tried to take her own life. When Babs is discharged from the hospital, she is taken into custody and a trial date was set. After the trial began, Babs, she maintained her innocence throughout and she was actually put on suicide watch during the course of the trial. She just uh, mentally, emotionally was not doing great. The prosecution offered 
just about zero forensic evidence. It was all basically circumstantial. The lack of forensic evidence is something that Babs representation would bring up constantly. They would say over and over, there is no forensic evidence. This is all circumstantial. This is silly. This should have never been brought to court. And they were adamant about this and they're still adamant about this. <laughs> we, every time we repeat that we are really innocent in this case. And does the prosecution actually have any evidence no. against No, I think they have nothing. They have to prove that they have something, but uh, they're trying to do it since four years and uh, uh, it's not going very well for them. Hmm? So the prosecution alleged that Babs had the opportunity to sabotage Elle's parachute because she had had all her gear with her that weekend they spent at Marcel Summers' apartment. And because Marcel and Els were in the bedroom having alone time and Babs was in the living room by herself, the prosecution argued that that was the perfect opportunity. They did a test that showed it would only take about 30 seconds to snip those cables with scissors. The prosecution said that hearing Els and Marcel in the other room having their intimate moment pushed Babs over the edge. Belgian court psychiatrists deemed Babs to be a danger to society and a psychopath with dramatic features. As proof of this, detectives claimed in 2005, Babs sent anonymous letters to Van Doren's husband, bombarded Summers with anonymous phone calls, and sent personal letters detailing Summers and Van Doren's relationship to Elle's close friends. As other proof of her mental instability, they also brought up the suicide attempt. Babs gave a statement to the media in 2007, and she said, I always knew that I was number two for Marcel and that Els was number one. I never had a problem with this at the time, as I had such a low image of myself that I could only ever imagine being number two. On October 22nd, 2010, Els Klotmans was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment. The reason that she was sentenced to 30 years as opposed to life is because the judge took her feeble psychological condition as an extenuating circumstance. They wanted to give Babs the opportunity to better herself and to get mentally, emotionally, physically well. As you can imagine for Van Doren's husband and children, they weren't too keen on this ruling. I think they would have preferred to see her spend the rest of her life in prison. The verdict was uh, on, on the, the two questions asked uh, to the jury, two times yes. So it is murder that uh, she's guilty of uh, and that's definitive now. Uh, and uh, it's pronounced by uh, a judgment by the court. I am very satisfied because the jury, they have said that all we have said in this process, it's okay. And that's very important for us. Also for my clients, because my clients already four years, they have said, perhaps you are the murderer. Now the jury has said, no, Jan de Wilde is not the murderer and his family they are not the murders, and for us, that's very, very important. I can see what the judge means about extenuating circumstances, given her mental state, but she was found guilty of this crime, and if she is guilty, it does seem rather light, considering the gruesome manner in which Van Doren perished. Babs appealed the verdict on the grounds that she was interrogated by police without the presence of her attorney. That appeal was denied in May 2011. And more recently, she filed for early release in October 2020, and that was also denied. The court felt that it was just too early for her to be released at this point. It's interesting to think about how much of this is based on circumstantial evidence. It does seem to be strong evidence, even being circumstantial, but there is always that small chance that 
they didn't do it, but it does seem to me the most logical explanation. How do you feel about her sentencing? Do you think that the judge was right in showing her the grace of not giving her a life sentence? Or do you think she should spend the rest of her life in prison? I'm torn. I always hope that people can rehabilitate themselves. I mean, when you take a life, that's kind of, that's kind of a big thing to rehabilitate yourself from, but there are a lot of people who better themselves while serving prison time. The video of, of poor Elle's plunging to her death, that really, that's gonna haunt me forever. It is in a way hard to feel sympathy for the person responsible for that. 